suggestions for specific GI symptoms. And obviously there's a lot of different GI symptoms that can occur in scleroderma, but I've decided to focus on you know, the ones that I think affect the majority of patients with this condition. So I think acid reflux is a big one, you know, and this often occurs early in the course of scleroderma and can, it can get worse over time. So there are obviously foods that can trigger acid reflux and should be avoided or minimized. And many of you may be already familiar with this list. So fried foods can be difficult, um, poor quality vegetable oils, uh, red meat, coffee, any kind of hot spices, uh, this promotes kind of more heat. Um, alcohol, citrus fruits and tomatoes can be difficult and vinegar. But I think what people don't often um, keep in mind is that there are actually foods that you can increase your consumption of that can help with the reflux symptoms. Um, so soups can be really good. Um, oat, like oatmeals or gluten-free oats, um, yogurts can be good. And we talked about even if you have a sensitivity to cow's milk, you can have non-dairy yogurt. Um, avocado, spinach can be good. And again, these can be cooked if you can't tolerate them raw. Um, same with cucumber, uh, liquid chlorophyll can be helpful. And then in terms of a tea, if you like to drink tea, chamomile tea can be very good if you have reflux symptoms. So again, not everything you have to do when you're trying to manage your GI symptoms with your diet. I don't want you to only think about what you have to deprive yourself of, but there's also things that you can do that can help um, nourish you and alleviate your symptoms without feeling like, oh my gosh, I really can't eat anything. Um, in terms of the bloating, again, this can be a big problem in scleroderma, especially later in the course of the disease. And so a few things that can be helpful for a lot of patients. So one is try to make sure you're drinking enough water during the day, because if the colon does not have enough blood flow and gets dehydrated, it's not gonna be able to move as well. So keeping hydration good, especially on hot days is really important. And then, you know, one thing to, to keep in mind are white foods. So things like white bread, white rice, white sugar, these are not your friends if you have bloating. So just keep that in mind. Just think of the color white. And these are the foods, you know, even white potatoes. You want to avoid these when you feel bloated. And then these, these harmful food uh, combinations are also good to keep in mind. So if you're going to have a meal with a lot of fat or protein, don't combine it with a simple carbohydrate like fruit because you can end up with more bloating. Always have your fruit separately. And then the other thing that I think is important to keep in mind is fiber intake. So for people who don't have scleroderma, one of the most common causes of having constipation and bloating is not getting enough fiber in the diet. So if you Google constipation, one of the first things that will say is, you know, take this fiber supplement. And this may work for someone who doesn't have scleroderma. But when you have scleroderma, the issue is not usually you're not getting enough fiber in your diet there's other issues with the motility of the GI tract. And so if you take too much supplemental fiber, sometimes this can actually make the bloating worse. And so I would be, you know, really cautious with using fiber supplements, especially ones that have additives. And I would try to do it more naturally. So something like ground flaxseed can have a nice amount of fiber in it, and you can sort of titrate over the course of a day, how much you're taking in. So, you know, when you have your, let's say, oats in the morning, you could first start by just sprinkling on a little bit of ground flaxseed and seeing how you do. Does it make you feel more bloated? And then over time, you may be able to add a little bit more. But I think this is a far more gentle approach than just taking, um, you know, Metamucil, which is just like an over the counter fiber supplement. It's better to get it through your food naturally, start out slow and you can gradually increase over time. Because again, the issue for scleroderma is usually not, you're not eating enough fiber. There's, there's other issues going on. Other things that can be helpful, you know, if you have a day where you're, you know, significantly bloated and you're trying to eat, you know, your midday meal, but you're super distended, 
it might not be a good idea to have a big meal, but maybe to have a more liquid meal. So something like a vegetable soup, pureed vegetables, a smoothie if you can tolerate smoothies. And this kind of can give the gut a little bit of a break. Um, you're still getting the calories that you need to have enough energy through the day. You're getting in, you know, if you're doing vegetables, you're getting in the vitamins and minerals you need, but you're not putting a big strain on the GI tract. So if you are continuously troubled by bloating, you can consider making one of your meals a liquid meal. And you can do it, you know, depending on what works for you. I have some patients that when they wake up in the morning, they can't even imagine eating. They just feel bloated and, and they may have, you know, start their day with a smoothie. I have other patients that by the end of the day, they start to feel more bloated. And so then when they go to sleep at night and they lay down, it's very uncomfortable. For those patients, their evening meal may be more of a soup or pureed vegetables. So again, tuning into how you feel and when you have these bloating symptoms can help determine you know, how you use this nutritional advice to help you. And I think one thing you know, to keep in mind too is that you wanna be warm when you eat. We talked about at the beginning of this talk that um, that same kind of rain odds that can happen in your hands that process can also happen in the gut too, where you might not be getting enough blood flow. So you wanna make sure that you're eating in an environment where you feel warm, because that's gonna allow the blood to flow to the gut and help with the digestion process. Um, so don't ever eat if you feel cold. Um, some herbal teas that can be helpful. So ginger tea is nice to have before meals because um, it kind of warms up the GI tract and gets it ready for digestion. Chamomile is nice for after meals. Um, and again, this can help with reflux too. Lemon balm is also kind of a nice neutral tea that usually doesn't um, cause symptoms in many patients. And this can, you can take between meals. Um, aloe vera juice um, can be helpful in the morning for bloating, and this can sometimes promote a bowel movement. Um, but with any herbs, you know, if you're going to start something, I would always talk to your doctor first just to make sure it's safe for you and it's safe to do in combination with the other medications that you're taking. Um, when you have diarrhea, you know, some of the recommendations are similar, but you really want to avoid raw food when you have diarrhea because raw food has more bacteria on it. The cooking process kills a lot of bacteria. So if you're already having diarrhea, if you introduce more bacteria into the gut with the food, you can actually exacerbate the diarrhea. So make sure if you're having a lot of diarrhea, you wanna be having more cooked foods. Um, making sure you stay hydrated and adding electrolytes to your water can be helpful avoid greasy foods, and really you want to be trying to have these kind of soft foods that are easy to digest. So the well-cooked oats, pureed winter squash, um, things that your GI tract doesn't have to work too hard on to digest. 